Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your constancy, for your patience, for your mercy, for your love, for your forgiveness. Lord, help us, all of us, be faithful as you are in the way we forgive, in the grace we extend, in the patience we display. Lord, we pray that you would knit us together as the church you desire. Set us on the track that you want us to walk on. Thank you, Lord, for this church family. Speak to us now, Lord. Help us to hear you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As our fellow church members just shared, the past year has been a difficult year for us here at Berea Baptist. Satan has been attacking us and working hard to keep us from being the church that God wants us to be. In 1 Peter 5.8, the Apostle Peter writes, Stay alert! Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The Apostle Peter compares the devil to a lion. Have you ever seen video footage of lions attacking a herd of animals, maybe zebras or wildebeest? Have you ever noticed the strategy that the lions employ when they attack the herd? They don't try to attack the whole herd all at once. Their strategy is to try to separate one member of the herd from the rest. And once they do, it's usually all over but the crying. The poor animal separated from the safety of the herd is no match for the lions. Scripture says the devil, Satan, prowls around like a roaring lion. And one of his primary strategies, strategies as he attacks God's people is the strategy of divide and conquer. He tries to separate us from each other. Satan does this because he knows, as the first note on the note sheet says, we are stronger together than we are apart. We are stronger together then we are apart. I believe that Satan has been attacking Berea Baptist because he doesn't like what we've been doing in working against him and his agenda. I believe he also fears the potential that he sees within us. If Satan did not consider us to be a threat to him, then he wouldn't waste his time on us. He wouldn't waste his time attacking us. So in Satan's attack, I guess you could say there's kind of a veiled compliment. Because apparently Satan considers us worth his time. Berea Baptist, God has been doing wonderful things through you. Now I would assume that most of us are aware of how We share the gospel and encourage people to grow in their walks with the Lord through Sunday school, through home-based small groups, through our Sunday morning worship services, through our Wednesday night adult classes, our youth program, our children's Awana program on Wednesday nights. But there is so much more that God is doing through us as a church. We volunteer, participate, and or give financial support to the Berea Health Ministry, as we heard wonderfully described for us this morning. The Day of Hope Ministry, which is coming up next month. It's formerly known as Feed the Children. The Oneida Baptist Institute, we've been collecting clothes for them. The Pregnancy Help Center in Richmond. Habitat for Humanity. The Gideons. The Madison County Home energy improvement program that we had two mission weekends where we supported them and worked with them in August. Operation Christmas Child through Samaritan's Purse. And we helped provide supplies for schoolgirls in Africa through Berea College's International Student Fellowship. In the past year, 
We've sent mission teams to share the gospel with an unreached people group in East Asia. I had the honor to be a part of that myself. We've built homes for widows and shared the gospel with school children in Guatemala. And Berea Baptist members also went on mission trips to Moldova, Nicaragua, and provided support for the installation of water wells in Peru. Praise God. Now, no one person or no one small group of people could have done all this. But we are stronger together than we are apart. Amen? We've also been busy ministering in the name of Jesus right here in Berea. As you know, in recent years, the economy has taken a downturn and people are struggling financially in all sorts of ways and I thought they did a great job expressing that through the drama we saw earlier in the service. Berea Baptist, you have stepped up to help meet these increased needs. Here's what I mean. Five years ago, in 2006, before the recession hit, we provided food in that year to 391 families through our food closet and our Thanksgiving and Christmas baskets. In the past year, from last October until now, we have provided food for 584 families. Praise God. Five years ago, in 2006, our humanitarian committee spent almost $24,000 to help 304 families with rent, utilities, and other needs. 304 families. In the past year, our humanitarian committee spent almost $38,000 to provide assistance to 710 families. Praise God. In the past year, when you look at all that Berea Baptist has given in regard to local, state, national, and international missions, in the past year, Berea Baptist has given almost $155,000 to missions. Praise God. And that's just the missions giving that we're aware of, that the church office is aware of. I know that there are many individual members in our church who have given and continue to give to all sorts of missions and ministries, both locally and around the world. And we don't even have record of that in the church office. Praise God. Berea Baptist, God is using us to advance his kingdom around the world. Amen. If Berea Baptist were to suddenly cease to exist, there would be many people in our community and even around the world that would be affected by our absence. I praise God for all that God is doing through us. He's doing so much more through us than any one of us could do on our own. We're stronger together than we are apart. Guys, think about this. If we've been able to do all these things over the past year, which admittedly has been a very difficult year for us relationally as a church, if we've been able to do all of this, can you imagine what we could do if we were totally unified? Think about it. Can you see why Satan is fighting so hard against this church? The potential in this church is amazing. What could God do through us if we were all unified under the lordship of Jesus and every one of us was willing to play the particular role that God wants each of us to play in his kingdom? We are so much stronger together than we are apart. Amen? This morning, we were blessed to witness the baptism of two young men, Cody Warford and Dalton Judd. Cody prayed to receive Jesus at home just a few months ago. Dalton prayed with me in my office. Now, the same week that I prayed with Dalton, I had the privilege of praying with another young man, Rowan Wardrop, as he prayed to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Just two days ago, I met with another young man 
who, through the influence of his family, and they said also through the influence of our Awana Children's Program, he prayed to receive Jesus, and he'll be baptized too in the weeks to come. I am always honored and thrilled to pray with someone for salvation. It's one of my favorite things to do, of course. But even though I'm often the person who gets to be there when people take that amazing step of following Jesus as Savior and Lord, when someone in our congregation, especially one of our children, prays to receive Jesus, what we are seeing is a blessed event that has come to fruition through the dedicated ministry of many different people in our church. It's not just something Pastor Kevin does. This is something that Berea Baptist does, ministering in all sorts of different ways in interdependent ministries that support and reaffirm each other. The gospel is shared. Seeds are planted and fertilized, and faith is nurtured through so many different ministries in our church. There are many ministries in our church that might seem to some people to be less significant. But these ministries are actually essential in providing opportunities for other ministries to function. It takes all of us working together. We're stronger together than we are apart. For example, we need more people who are willing to help out with our Wednesday night meal ministry. Some people might think, well, you know, I mean, that's nice to have a meal on Wednesday nights, but it's not really a, you know, a big spiritual endeavor. That ministry in particular is essential in providing needed support for the attendance of our other Wednesday evening programs. And when we have those meals, our attendance jumps incredibly. It makes a huge difference. We need people who are willing to serve in that way so that we can be even more effective in the other ministries. We need more people who are willing to drive our church van on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. And provide transportation for people who can't get here on their own. Someone might say, well, driving a van, that's not much of a spiritual ministry. Absolutely it is. Because it makes these other ministries possible. Unless we all chip in and we pull together and we give and we serve however we can. Guys, we can't do it apart. We're stronger together. We need each other. Every ministry. There are ministries in our church that are much more visible than others. But the less visible ministries are also needed for us to function as a healthy church. For example, we currently need more people who are willing to teach children about Jesus in Kids Zone. That's our children's church program that's happening right now that happens during this worship service. And you saw all these little ones head that way and they walked up to the second floor where they're learning about Jesus in a way that is geared toward their age group. In case you haven't noticed, what I share through the sermon, even though I try to put it together in a way that will make sense to a lot of different age groups, most of what I share is a little above children's level. At least I hope so. Maybe it doesn't seem that way. At least, you know, we don't pass out crayons for you to use on the note sheet. But they are able to receive spiritual instruction that is specifically geared for them, for their level of understanding. Most of us never see that happen. But guys, it is a valuable ministry, and we need people who are willing to sense that calling and say, yes, I want to be part of a ministry like that. We need more people who are willing to work in our nursery and in our preschool, sharing the love of God with our children. Again, that is something... Church after church after church that I've been aware of or been a part of consistently will have trouble getting people to serve in the nursery or in the preschool which makes no sense if we are as dedicated as we often say we are to evangelism and sharing the gospel. Guess what the sweet spot is when it comes to spiritual instruction for a human being. If you're talking about what span, what period in their life is the most formative, guys, it starts in the nursery. It starts in the preschool. What's happening with our children? If we say, if any of us are going to say that we're serious about evangelism, guys, that's where it is. I've seen study after study that after a person reaches the age of 17, and then after they reach the age of 25, 40, the older a person gets, the less receptive they are to the gospel. Now, that doesn't mean that we just stop sharing the gospel to old people. It doesn't mean that. 
What it does mean is we better be wise about how we do allocate the resources we have and not just money but time and energy and we better use that evangelistic effort where it's going to pay off the most. Amen? We need, we need people who are willing to love our children in the nursery, in the preschool, and minister in those ways. In uh, just, what, what is it, a, a week or so? October 31st? Hallelujah Harvest. Major event for us every year. It is a Halloween alternative that our church provides. We're going to have hundreds of people come through this facility. The, the adults and the children are going to get to play all sorts of games. They're going to be given all sorts of candy. They're going to give them toys. We're going to have a gospel presentation, some sort of puppet presentation up here that night that they'll come through and they'll be invited to attend. It is an amazing event, and it gives a lot of people an opportunity to maybe step inside this place and maybe start to feel comfortable about, you know, maybe we could visit that church who otherwise might not come here. We need a lot of people to make that happen. And I was just talking with uh, one of the organizers this morning. We don't have enough volunteers yet. We need people who are willing to serve on that night, and set up and running the games and tear down. We need people. We need candy. There's a box out there for candy. We need more candy for that. As the note sheet says, like different organs in a single body, all the separate ministries within the church are needed for the whole church to be strong and effective. All the separate ministries are needed. The Bible teaches us that if you are a Christian, then you are a member of the body of Christ. If you're a Christian, you're a member of the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul talking about this in 1 Corinthians 12. He says this, speaking to the Christians there, he says, Together you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of that body. And just as a human body has different parts that do different things, the body of Christ is made up of different Christians working in different ways and different roles. And we're all needed. If you would, please take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that's page 813, and the Bible's provided in the pews. First Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul is talking about this concept of the church as the body of Christ and how the body of Christ is made up of all these different parts. Beginning in verse 4, we read this. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And then he lists several examples of spiritual gifts, of how the Holy Spirit gives us abilities that go beyond ourselves in order to advance the kingdom through the church. Skip on down to verse 11. After providing those examples, he says this. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. If you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, that means that the Holy Spirit of God has come to live inside of you. And when the Holy Spirit of God came to live inside of you, he endowed you with certain spiritual gifts, certain uh, capacities that God has planted in you. The Holy Spirit has given each one of us spiritual gifts and he has empowered each of us to serve in certain ways that strengthen the whole body and help the church accomplish, it, accomplish its mission. Did you notice there, I believe it was in verse 4, it says that these spiritual gifts that we were given were given for the common good. The spiritual gifts that I have, God didn't, didn't give them to me for me. He gave the spiritual gifts that I have to me for us. To serve all of us. The spiritual gifts that God has given you, He didn't just give them to you, for you. He gave you the spiritual gifts that you have for us, for the, the strengthening of the entire body in its mission of serving Christ. 
So let me ask you this. Are you fulfilling the role that God wants you to play in the body of Christ? Are you doing that? Are you living out those spiritual gifts? Are you applying them? When parts of the body stop working, it puts a strain on the rest of the body. Let's say that, let's say my right arm just suddenly stopped working. Well, I'm left-handed. So it'd be an irritation, it'd be an aggravation, but that's okay, I can still function. But let's say that my left leg suddenly stopped working. It's gotten a little more serious, but I can still hop. I can get some things done. It's going to wear me out a lot faster, but I can still do something. Well, let's say, as some of you might be hoping, that my tongue stopped working. Did you get that? <laughs> Amen. Thanks, Dewey. The idea is this, guys. Just as a human body, whenever something in our human body stops working, the rest of the body has to compensate, right? And it can be exhausting. It's the same way in far too many churches. How many of you have ever heard that in most churches, 20% of the people do 80 to 100% of the work? You heard that? Yeah. And unfortunately, that's true far too often. That is not God's plan. That is not God's desire. Did you notice in the scripture we just read in 1 Corinthians 12 that it says that the Holy Spirit has given spiritual gifts to each one of us just as he has determined. The spiritual gifts that you have, it's not random. It's not like God just sprinkled them out of a big basket and just said, spiritual gifts. He has intentionally, with forethought, decided this is the spiritual gift I'm giving Mike Brochus. Here it is, the spiritual gifts. Here you go, Mike. These are the spiritual gifts that I am giving to Jamie Boggs. These are the spiritual gifts that I am giving to Sarepta Bailey. He is intentional about it. Did you know that in Berea Baptist Church, we have all the spiritual gifts that we need to accomplish the mission and the ministries that God wants us to do? We've got it. Because God knew exactly who would be here in 2011, who would be here at this time. He knew. So it's there, guys, and none of us need to get burnt out. When you've got 20% of the people doing 80 to 100% of the work, people get exhausted, they get burnt out, they get frustrated. You wind up with a lot of people serving in ways that, to be honest, they're not gifted to serve. That's not God's plan. Guys, God has a role in the body of Christ for each one of us to play. And it is a, listen, limited role. It's a limited role. That's an important point. You need to digest that. God does not expect you to do it all. The reason that I lean on this point is because so many people, it's easy to have that, you know, that thought go through your mind of, okay, if I really surrender myself to God, just say, okay, God, I'll do anything you tell me to do. It's easy to think, well, he's going to wear me out. He's going to have me doing everything. You know, I'll never have another free moment if I surrender to God like that. That's not how God works. God will not do that. How do I know that? Because God did not give any of us all the spiritual gifts. Any one of us. There's not any person here, myself included, who has every spiritual gift that could possibly be had. You have some spiritual gifts. I have some spiritual gifts. There are some things that I'm gifted to do. There are other things that I'm terrible at. I'm just not gifted at all. And that means that God does not intend that even though I'm a pastor and some people expect it, God does not intend that I do everything. God does not intend that you do everything. Each one of us has a limited role to play. And if each one of us will seek God and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And if we'll plug in in that limited way, then none of us have to burn out. And the work of God gets done. Amen? So let me ask you. Are you fulfilling the role that God wants you to play in his body? Maybe you think of it, Kevin, I'm not sure what my role is in the body of Christ. What do I do? Where do I start? I'm so glad you asked. In your bulletin, you should see a piece of paper that says on it, Ministries of Berea Baptist Church. Do you see that? 
And there we have many of our ministries listed. Look over that. This morning, we are having something we usually have about once a year. We are having a ministry fair. And by the way, those of you who are working in this ministry fair, you know who you are. You're invited to go ahead and go to your stations, please. Representatives from each of these ministries will be out in the hallway at different stations after this service. And they would love to talk with you about how you can join God's work in all sorts of these different ways. And if you look over there, guys, there's all sorts of ways to serve. And one of them that's not on here, but there is a station out there, is Hallelujah Harvest. We were talking about that right outside the door. There'll be someone that's willing to help you know how you can plug in to that. But we've got all sorts of things. Like even look at number 25. This is something that's new this year. This is a great idea. Medical appointment transportation ministry. Every once in a while we have people, usually elderly people, who can't provide transportation for themselves and they need a ride to a doctor's appointment or something like that. Man, the only spiritual gifts you need for that is just compassion and the ability to drive. How many of you have a driver's license and are capable of safely operating a motor vehicle? You know, there are all sorts of ways that we can serve here. Now listen, as you look at this list, where could God use you? Given the spiritual gifts he's invested in you, where could God use you? And even if you're already serving through Berea Baptist Church in some way, and I, I look through here and I can see all sorts of different people that I know you're part of that 20%, and you're working so hard. If that's you, please go ahead and check out the different ministry stations. I ask that because it might help you know how to help someone else find a place of service in ministry because you're more aware of the opportunities that are here. Guys, today we will not have our usual invitation time. Our ministry fair this morning is our invitation. So in just a few minutes, I will pray a prayer, you will be dismissed, and I invite you to go out these doors and walk down this hallway and see what God is doing in Berea Baptist Church and ask how you can play a role in it. Are you ready to step into the role that God has for you in the body of Christ? In Ephesians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul wrote this. We will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Guys, we need each other. We need each other regardless of what Satan's been trying to do. Don't buy into what he's doing. We are stronger together than we are apart. Let's focus on what really matters and the mission that God has for us. Now, at this point, I want to ask Russell Cole to come. He's going to share some announcements with us. And as he's coming, I'm going to invite a couple of special people and their families to step forward. Cody Warford, would you and your family come forward? Dalton Judd, would you and your family come forward? I have some baptismal certificates to give out. Dalton, buddy, we are so proud of you. Praise God for what he's doing in your life. Amen. <clears throat> Cody, we are so proud of you too, buddy. We praise God for the decision you've made. It is the most important decision of your life. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask these guys to join me at the back door here. And as we head that way, Russell, you can share the announcements. And after he shares the announcements, I'll lead us in our closing prayer.